Tuberculosis has claimed at least 500 million lives. It is the biggest all-time killer from a single pathogen. Hello, hello, TB. Why, hello there, Professor. Well, well, there you are. Tell us about yourself. Sure, I love to talk about myself. One of the most devastating was Black Death, or bubonic plague. The disease, transmitted by fleas, marched across Europe and Asia in the 14th century and killed a third of the population. The death rate from bubonic plague was 90%. The battle continued until the 20th century, when an accidental discovery changed the course of medical history. On the return trip, the planes bring wounded back to the hospitals in Britain. Gangrene, from which millions have perished in past wars, has been conquered by the miracle of penicillin. Scientists are manufacturing... The miracle began in 1928, when a British scientist named Alexander Fleming went on vacation. He didn't bother to clean up first, just placed his bacterial cultures in the sink. When he returned, he noticed one dish had gotten moldy. The mold killed the bacteria, but Fleming couldn't stabilize or purify it. That took a four-man team from Oxford and 10 years. They named the drug after the mold. Penicillium led to penicillin. Thousands of men, thanks to penicillin and plasma, will come home to their thankful families. The whole world of peace to come will reap the benefits of this great wartime medical discovery. Science has Penicillin was the dawn of a new age in medicine. At last, doctors had the power to heal. It seemed man had infectious disease on the run from the medical community was, in fact, that they really didn't need any more uh, new antibiotics. I think that that was a certain segment of the medical community who didn't understand bacteria and understand how bacteria change and modify and adapt. This is one way bacteria adapt. A bacterium with a plasmid, plasmids hold genetic information, will connect with another bacterium. A copy of the DNA is transferred. The new DNA may dictate a new food or energy source or tell how to dodge an antibiotic. This sharing is passed on and on to other bacteria, even among different species, and it can happen in less than an hour. You could say that, well, if organisms really began to exchange information, then all bacteria would kind of be, be the same. They'd be in an amalgam, but they're not. Each one is kind of very individualistic. Uh, in terms of what they do and how they survive. And each one has a gimmick in order to survive so that it has its place as it were in the world. I think contributes to the problem of resistant bacteria in the community, which then becomes a problem in the hospital, which then becomes a problem in extended care facilities, and they're all inextricably linked. During the 1950s, animals started getting antibiotics too. The drugs not only curbed disease, but for reasons still not understood, they promoted growth. Today, half of all antibiotics used in the United States are used in animal feed. This little piggy will be fed penicillin and tetracycline before it goes to market. Even if you're a vegetarian, you get a dose. Antibiotics are also sprayed on fruits and vegetables. I can't think of a microbiologist that would say that the wide application of antibiotics will do anything but select for antibiotic-resistant organisms. And so that's a consequence. So if there are economic reasons for doing it, that may be what the public wants, but they also have to pay the consequences, which will be that those antibiotics may not be useful in the treatment of diseases. It has happened. A patient in a Tokyo hospital developed a vancomycin-resistant staph infection. If the strain travels to the United States, as resistant strains have in the past, doctors will have very few options. One of the factors that has led to a global increase in resistance among bacteria is the fact that we have very mobile populations of people. 
You have international travel where you can literally take a resistant organism and transport it from one continent to the other in less than a day. So it's, it's a major problem around the world. Some resistant strains of disease are untreatable and potentially deadly.